What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting and another really crazy day for the markets with volatility spiking a little bit, yields rolling over, the markets were very, very flat, uncertain and indecisive at the same time, but we ended up down except for the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ was up over 45 basis points. We got the S&P down 15 and the Dow Jones here dropping a little bit over 90 points on the day with the 10-year yields closing in on 3.55% and the VIX getting up to 30 and then dropping right back down. So lots to discuss, lots to unpack in this video. We've got inflation coming out tomorrow morning, so I will be live um, at around 8 a.m. Eastern to cover the inflation print. And of course, talk a little bit about the CPI numbers and, and, and take a look at the market's reaction. So make sure that you drop the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're just joining us for the first time, we talk a lot about fundamental and technical analysis along with macroeconomics and stocks and options as well. So we will be live and make sure that you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on when we go live for these important events. So markets here, this is what we did. Um, again, coming down a little bit, we did gap down pretty severely, right? So it was kind of like a really volatile day where we gapped up, gapped down, um, and then we kind of filled that gap all the way up for the NASDAQ getting up to 11,300 and then rolled right back over. Same thing with the S&P, same thing with the Dow. The 10-year yields rolling over pretty aggressively as investors kind of flock a little bit more towards uh, the bond and, and fixed income really. And gold and flight to safety was the name of the trade after the Silicon Valley Bank collapsing. And this is something that I have mentioned before. I've talked about this, right? So we, we talked about this concept called flight to quality where investors go after a uh, higher yield in a more safer environment, right? Investors, the main goal for investors really is to look for yield, right? And we want to do that in a way that's very, very risk averse, right? We want to make sure that we are getting the best alternative to stocks, equities, whatever it is that we're looking for. And bonds right now giving you the higher yield is literally a no brainer considering that bonds are relatively a lot safe compared to equities because they are backed by corporations, backed by the government, especially if you're going after U.S. Treasuries. And of course, the yields are so high that it makes sense for companies to instead of, you know, investing in equities, they can kind of invest in bonds and fixed income. And now it's even more so because companies who have deposits in a lot of these banks and these regional banks um, also have the opportunity to maybe buy U.S. Treasuries, buy bonds, build out these T-bond ladders. So they have the liquidity and they have the certainty that their deposits are safe and backed by the full credit and faith of the United States government. So once that happens, you're seeing a lot of the bond yields roll over because that because of that inverse correlation, right? Bond prices move up, yields come down. And TMF, as much of a green it was in the beginning of the day, it did roll over a little bit. So pretty strong red candle, uh, but only up about half a percent. So it got up to as much as 971. It was at one point up almost 10% but started to roll right back down. Same thing with TLT, almost an identical chart, got up to our resistance of 109, got tapped out at that level and started rolling right back down. Still green, but a pretty significant red candle because the US 10-year yield started to move right back up. So you can see that pretty long wick on the downside. We did see a lot of momentum back up on the 10-year yields. So I do still have a trade on TMF. A lot of our members in our Discord community have, and we're still doing really well. And I do expect more downside for the yields to continue as there's also talks and hopes and anticipation the Federal Reserve is going to maybe hike maybe one more time. And then maybe maybe 50 basis points is coming over the next couple meetings. And then there's going to be a pause and straight up cuts all the way through 2024. We'll find out. But there was going to be a breaking point, and this was it. We got the breaking point. And uh, again, I personally don't believe the Federal Reserve is going to actually stop right here. I'm not advocating for higher rates. I want to be very clear. Like, I'm not saying that we need higher rates. I'm just saying that I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to stop right here. I think they're going to continue with their rate hike plan as as, as you know, pre previously suggested, literally at the testimony a few days ago, um, but the pause is going to come in much faster considering how high we already are and the fact that the economy is really starting to show some real cracks, um, you know, and, and they're starting to see some real breaking points for a lot of the financial institutions, the banks, and a lot of other things will happen if rate hikes continue to get increased um, at this substantial level. So I do expect the 10-year yields to still roll over and come down even more. That's going to help our trade in TLT and TMF. So that's one of the ideas that we've already got going. A lot of our other trade plans also worked out really well despite the markets really pulling back. For example, Vertex was another trade idea doing really well, started to push right back inside this green rectangle and up over 2% on the day, outperforming 
outperforming the Nasdaq, the Dow, and the S&P. L. Lilly was another stock up over 3% on the day, now starting to move back up into that green rectangle. So doing really, really well on that as well. So again, if you want to get access to all the alerts and the trade ideas that I share with everybody every single week or every month, depending on when I find opportunities, the link's going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. We'd love to have you on board. And there is a 16% annual discount available for a few more days. So something broke, but the Fed is still expected to go through with the rate hikes. And that wasn't the headline just a few hours ago. As I mentioned in my previous video, the markets are playing a very dangerous game. Anticipating the Federal Reserve is not going to go through with the rate hikes. And uh, that was one of the reasons why the markets were gapping up. The futures were e significantly green last night and we had the markets gap up 1.5, 1.6%. The QQQs, the S&P, they were all pushing higher because the Federal Reserve, FDIC, and the Treasury Department stepped in, backstopped all depositors with unlimited insurance, and that pretty much restored confidence. And the market started anticipating that, okay, we don't have a systemic risk here with banks, but let's just switch gears and think about what the Federal Reserve is going to do, considering that this is more of a breaking point for the economy and, and markets started anticipating literally no hikes from the Federal Reserve on March 22nd, which in my opinion is a very dangerous game to be playing because every time the markets anticipate, every time the markets predict, well, we know what happens, right? We get disappointed and the markets roll over. So this is where the probability is right now. So we are expected to raise rates by 25 basis points going into this March 22nd meeting. So the probability has jumped to 73% uh, earlier. It's been all over the place, right? It's been back and forth. And uh, this right here is going to be the current probability meeting expectations. So another 50 basis points expected over the next couple meetings in March and May, and then cuts all the way through from uh, June and all the way up until July for the markets coming down to three and a half to three point seven five percent. Eventually, that's going to be the rate the market's expecting. So in terms of market breadth here, uh, we got 16 stocks declining with 14 advancing in the Dow. S&P 500 was also pretty break even, 286 stocks declining with 205 stocks pushing higher. NASDAQ, we had over 2,100 stocks going down with 1,200 stocks pushing higher. Uh, and NASDAQ 100, it was kind of like a split of 60-40 between advancing and declining respectively. So kind of like a, a very, very flat day for the markets. Of course, the financial sector really hurting with Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Charles Schwab, Citigroup, um, you know, almost all regional banks, they were all selling off without a doubt. And even the energy sector had a pretty brutal day all selling off as well. But I do smell something. I do smell a lot of fear in this overblown market here, considering the financial stocks. When you talk about the big four, when you talk about some of the larger banks here, institutions, I do smell a lot of fear considering what's going on with, with the entire, the whole situation. And that's one of the reasons I, I pretty much put XLF on your watch list. And I'm definitely watching KRE as well. That's going to be another overblown stock in my opinion. That's an ETF that pretty much has a lot of regional banks, right? So we've got regional banking ETF, definitely on my watch list. It's down over 12%, waiting for 39.40 levels. RSI extremely oversold. And we, we already know, I mean, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury Department, and FDIC is stepping in. They're backstopping all of it. And that's, that's kind of restoring that confidence. But is the, is the confidence restored? No. I mean, people are still fearful of the fact that, you know, Silvergate and we've got Signature Bank and we've got Silicon Valley Bank, all of them are dropping. It's something to do with the S, right? Every bank that's kind of named S is dropping, right? Silvergate, Silicon Valley, and we've got Signature Bank. It's crazy. Um, but I do think there's going to be an opportunity when it comes to the financial sector, uh, you know, in, in about a day or two, considering how oversold and overblown this everything's right now with all the panic that's going on. Utilities outperforming, real estate doing well, healthcare technologies were the sectors that were doing really well with energy and financials, the, the biggest underperformers on the day. Over the last one week, we've got all 11 sectors here red. And over the last one month, again, all 11 sectors in the red here. Rough rice prices, uh, coffee prices, heating oil, soybean, natural gas, all pushing higher. With lean hogs, we got canola, sugar, orange juice, palladium, and cocoa volatility, all of them selling off. With Bitcoin pushing past twenty four thousand, and Ethereum is also past sixteen seventeen hundred dollars at the moment as well. So going over to crude oil, we talked about a potential trade opportunity on crude oil as well. Something to consider, definitely. Uh, be careful because just because it's worked out in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen once again. That's like the number one tip that I can give you from a trading perspective is just because it's worked out in the past doesn't mean it'll happen again. But the probability is certainly higher. 
So every time we come down to low 70s, crude oil prices have seen a big buyer step in. They've seen the buyers uh, push the demand back up and we've seen a rally back up to low 80s. Something to consider. I'll be sharing a more specific trade idea on this with all of our members on Discord. Um, kind of coming up with the ETF that's going to be more cool related with the US oil prices and where the profit target, the stop loss and the entry would be. So all the details will be shared in our Discord. Uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, a huge, huge rally, 24,000, very, very substantial move up. And same with Ethereum as well, getting up to almost $1,700 once again. And it looks like it's starting to break above this lower high, but we still got a pretty strong resistance sitting right over here at 1738 for, uh, for Ethereum to watch, right? So that's also going to be a very, very important level to pay attention to. And of course, companies like Mara and Riot and Clean Spark, all of them were up like 9, 10, 25. 18% all, all the way across in double digits. Volatility was up almost 7% here on the day. It was much higher. It was at one point over 23% green and getting up to over 30 levels. So there was definitely a lot of volatility. There was definitely a lot of back and forth here in the markets. So I, I still don't believe that the volatility is quite done. We've got inflation numbers coming out tomorrow, of course. That's going to be the big driver for the markets. Um, and we'll continue to monitor how the volatility trades and how the markets react to the inflation numbers, for which I will be live. Um, looking at the 10-year yields, so we are still rolling over. I mentioned that you know that we're getting up to a resistance, a pretty important resistance at roughly 4%, and that was a bit of a tap-out level for the yields. We got up to that level and then really just dropped from that about 13 14%. That's what's helping TLT and TMF to push right back up. So the next support really is going to be at 3.3.5%. So this right here is going to be that support level to watch for the 10-year yields. Um, and if you get down to that level, TLT, TLT, TMF would be at that resistance, at that target, and we'll kind of reconvene at those levels where we need to kind of take profit, where our st trailing stop loss is going to be. Talking about the S&P 500, now, we didn't come down to 37.74, but a green candle on a red day does suggest there was some momentum intraday from the buyer's side. Uh, but this right here is going to be that support level that I'm watching right now, 37.74. Again, big inflation numbers coming out tomorrow. It's possible that we get down to that level, retest, validate, and then see some buyers stepping in. But that is going to be that next most important support level to watch for the S&P. The NASDAQ getting a little bit of a buyers here and, and some demand sitting at that lower high. So this lower high has been rejecting us since the beginning of this downtrend since November of 21. And right now, this old resistance potentially acting as a new support for the Nasdaq, right? So we are seeing some buyers to step in. So a very strong day for the Nasdaq, relatively speaking, compared to the Dow or the S&P 500. So this is still going to be that lower high and that support to watch. If we do break down, well, October lows, here we come. In my opinion, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, talking about Apple here, Apple also getting bought up. I think a lot of money is going to start to kind of flow into Apple and, and the likes because they are considered as, you know, cash havens considering how much cash these companies have. And they are you know, really, really considered as safer investments uh, because of how much cash they have, because of their pricing power, because of their moat. Um, you know, you will see a little bit of consolidation, maybe even away from financials and banks over two FANG stocks, over two big tech because of that, of that uh, you know, safe nature. But of course, 2022 told us and showed us that nothing really is safe in this market when you have even FANG stocks dropping 40, 50, 60 percent. So there's no really no real safety anywhere. And I mentioned this during our live stream, right? I was thinking about this over the weekend that nothing really is safe. Nothing really is certain in this market, in this environment, in this world. Because if you even have deposits going away, then, you know, you really just, you know, you have to be very, very careful. You have to be extra cautious with who you bank with, what brokerage, brokerages you use. And of course, those were not even problems, right? The, the main problem was where you invest, right? That was the main question because that's really where the majority of that risk came from. But now we also have to be cautious about, you know, who we bank with, what we use as brokerages. Uh, are those companies even liquid enough to make sure that they sustain for our lifetime? Um, and of course, where to invest is like just the whole other problem, whole, whole other questions that we need to answer, uh, looking at risk analysis and, of course, a lot of investment opportunities. So there's a lot of uncertainty around us, uh, but the best thing you can do is some of the more personal tips that I can give you is definitely meditate, have that peace of mind, 
um, you know, with where you're putting your money and just be careful, right? Read the fine print, you know, do as much due diligence and research as you can. Um, I can only go as far as to tell you, okay, where to look, right? If you're banking with a company, just make sure they're FDIC insured. When you're banking with a brokerage, uh, make sure they're SIPC insured. Those are certain things that, you know, definitely you want to pay attention to, but you have to obviously do a lot of the lifting because you're the one putting your hard earned money into these banks and brokerages. So, the last thing I would want is for that bank or that brokerages to go belly up and for you to lose your money. So it only takes a few minutes, do more research. And I really want you guys to be safe and feel safe and have that peace of mind in the markets. Uh, and even even your simple cash deposits, right? Because <laughs> that's crazy if you don't even have that peace of mind. Um, but anyway, Apple here up 1.3%, $150 and resistance going to stay put at 157. That's the level that we're watching. And we've got a higher low standing roughly at around 133, 134. My fair value ended up at around 120. So still waiting for Apple to come down to our fair value. Amazon, on the other hand, uh, getting some buyers to step in 1.87%, not a bad day. Once again, we're seeing some, uh, you know, demand here for, for Amazon. So lots of consolidation sideways for the most part over the last few days So still trading inside this lower high and lower low pattern. Uh, and support level is going to stay put roughly around here. That's going to be at around uh, 81 to 82 dollars inside that green rectangle. And we got a resistance sitting roughly around 107, 108, kind of in line with this lower high for Amazon as well. Talking about Tesla and Tesla here up 60 basis points. So look at that, getting some buyers to step in at 166, 165. So low for the day, 163.91. So we did see some buyer stepping in around here and getting back up to 174, 175. Resistance is going to stay put at 175, 176 over here. So that's going to be that level to watch. But yes, a lot of buyers stepping in, lots of demand coming in for Tesla at those prices. I will be looking at uh, selling covered calls once again to hedge my downside on Tesla. We'll update everybody with that new trade alert on Discord tomorrow and probably later this week. And we'll most likely be looking at selling cash secured puts on Tesla as well. Uh, eventually, right? May not be this month, maybe next month, but on the next big red day, we'll be looking at uh, potentially selling a cash flow put on a Tesla as well to take advantage of the downtrend and of course, higher premiums as price comes down even lower. Talking a little bit about um, NVIDIA and NVIDIA here on the day is starting to still fall over. We're still lower from $243. It's down a little bit about five, 6% and pretty flat on the day, literally no change. And this is the gap that we need to fill for NVIDIA eventually. So we're starting to kind of fill that gap a little bit. It's gonna lower that just slightly. And uh, again, negative divergence still intact. We've still got the valuation a little bit on the high side. So I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA comes down, but of course it's been a really, really stubborn stock to deal with. Advanced micro devices also coming down about 80 basis points, but a lot of consolidation intraday. So a bit of a doji candle. So still making higher highs and higher lows. And this is gonna be those higher highs. And resistance is gonna stay put all the way up to $95, $97. I got a pretty strong support here, sitting roughly at around $73, $74 per share for advanced micro devices. Talking about PayPal. And PayPal on the day was down 1%, so obviously not as bad or severe as some of the other stocks out there. And we have completely filled this gap up, so I'm going to close that one right now. This gap is done, and the next support really is going to be sitting roughly down to $67, $68 per share. So those right there are going to be some levels to pay attention to, and we got a lower high sitting roughly at just under 80 bucks for PayPal. That's going to be that resistance. Support level stays put at 67 and my fair value is roughly at around 70 bucks for this stock. Square coming down 2%. So again, it did break out, got rejected at this resistance right here and starting to roll right back over $58, $59. This right here is going to be that support level that I'm watching for Square moving forward. And I would be very much interested in taking a potential swing trading idea here, long opportunity here, $58, $59. Better yet at $51, $52 for Square moving forward. Talking a little bit about Meta, and Meta on the day was uh, up over 77 basis points, so some buyers stepping in. There was demand, and resistance is going to stay put at 188, so that right there is going to be that level, support level, and we've got a gap to fill here down to the 153, 168, around those levels. So resistance is going to stay put at 188, and my fair value also is going to be closer to, I believe, uh, in the 170s, if I'm not mistaken, 170s, or might be even lower. I might have to double check, but a lot of consolidation sideways, and the valuation still makes a lot of sense for Meta, even at $180 and $469 billion in market cap. In fact, Meta is one of the highest free cash flow yielding stocks out there at the moment. It's 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 at the so there's an ETF called Cows C O W Z which is basically a Pacer Cows 100 ETF. And it basically looks for companies that have the highest trailing 12-month free cash flow yield 
free cash flow is very, very important for the company, right? Because it's very uh, difficult to manipulate, right? So some investors, some companies, some ETFs look strictly at the price to earnings multiple. But this Cow's ETF looks for price to free cash flow. In fact, this over the last three years, it has outperformed the S&P 500, this ETF in particular. And Meta is at the top of the list. And yes, you might be wondering, like three three years, this has outperformed the S&P 500. And, and, and despite having Meta in their in their, in their their ETF, yes, it's it's still outperform even though Meta's in their portfolio just as it goes to show what the strength of the other high free cash flow yielding companies and uh, I think 15% is what makes up Cow's ETF for Meta. Meta is like 15% of their ETF uh, but it's got the highest free cash flow yield right now even at these prices. So 188, 189 is going to be that resistance. Support level is going to stay about at 168 for Meta. Talking about Netflix and Netflix also getting a little bit of a bounce back higher 26 basis points rightly so considering how oversold this stock really is at the moment. RSI MACD really, really overblown on the downside. And 276 is going to be that support for Netflix moving forward. Talk about Google and Google here starting to push right back up. So it came down to that support of 89, 90 bucks. And we're seeing some demand come back in 71 basis points and uh, lots of consolidation for Google. Google definitely is in a very vulnerable spot for the, with its nemesis, Microsoft. But we'll continue to monitor how this goes on, how this plays out with AI at the moment. And support level is going to stay put at $86, $87. Uh, talking about Microsoft now, Microsoft also seeing some buyers to step back in. We're seeing a little bit of momentum. So 2% green, 253, 254 is where we're trading right now. So my fair value obviously has been up to $220. And last but not least, we got Shopify. Shopify pushing up 77 basis points. We're seeing some buyers stepping in at $41, $42 where it's trading at. Support level is going to stay put at 29 close to 30 bucks. And this is where I would be interested in taking a long trade idea, long trade opportunity for Shopify. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and a complete update on the markets. Make sure that you subscribe. Tomorrow's a big day for inflation at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. I will be live to cover that report. And uh, make sure that you do join our Discord and our Patreon as well. If you want to get access to all the trade alerts, all the options alerts, whatever we're trading, uh, trade ideas as well on different stocks and ETFs. And of course, not, not to forget a lot of individual stock analysis and videos and educational uh, tutorials and lectures as part of your Patreon membership as well. So link's going to be down below. So always happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video.